subscribe, please. Hey guys, welcome back. It is me, Gimpy, and I'm here with the second part of my review through covering War of the Worlds by DVG. Now, I had a little issue when I went to take and get this set up to film for you guys the second part. I played through it a little bit so I could show you some farther aspects of the game that we didn't cover in part one and ended up losing the game. So, um, I basically what I did is I restarted it back to where I kind of left off, played through a couple more turns of the game, and I just went ahead and added in the technologies that I was wanting to show you guys just so I can show you some of the, uh, the stuff that I hadn't covered in, in part one, some of the more in-depth concepts uh, without fear of <laughs> losing the game and not being able to show you guys that stuff. So we're going to take and just cover a few more things in this video and that will wrap up our review through covering War of the Worlds. Now, one of the things I was talking about in my first video that makes this game a little bit easier is the Tesla technologies and I went ahead and added in a couple of my favorites. Now don't do this when you're actually you know, playing the game, but for our intense purpose of showing you guys the stuff, uh, one of the examples is the field laser here. Now you'll see it shows the you know, technology itself, whatever it is, and then up in the upper right you've got a couple of different colors green yellow red just like uh, everything else in this game associated with those dice rolls and that has to do with making breakthroughs so you'll pay to research the technology after you place tesla down in new york and then during your production phase of each turn you can pay as many times as you would like for whatever different technology to attempt to make a breakthrough and once you make a breakthrough, that's it. You can only do one breakthrough per turn. So for this field laser, it would take you three turns to take and actually research it because you need three uh, breakthroughs on it, right? But either a green or a red roll will get you a breakthrough. And then that technology grants you this laser cannon that has a range of up to two, hits like normal, green at range one, yellow at range two, but it destroys a tripod in one shot instead of needing two hits to destroy a uh, tripod. So it's a really cool little thing. And then another one I went and grabbed out to show you guys. And again, these are just a couple. There's a, a handful of different uh, technologies that really uh, change the aspect of the game. Uh, Tesla coils. Had to grab these because it, it's a Tesla coil. I mean, come on, you gotta love this shit. Uh, it's basically a lightning tower. Once you uh, get a breakthrough on these, you can place them down in a state and then during combat, anytime you roll a red, it destroys a tripod. So it can destroy a tripod at any range, but only effectively if you roll a six, you know, if you really think about it that way. Uh, neat thing though, you can kind of place them all over the board and have uh, interesting stuff going on with that. Um, I did get, in the game that I played off camera, I just, I got annihilated. They completed the flying machine. They had red weed everywhere. It just, it did not go well. So, uh, I played through again up to a couple more turns and took and got the next cylinder. Cylinder three is down. It's down here in Florida. And I went ahead and did the production phase here for the first turn because that's just buying some uh, units. And I've got some laser turrets and some tesla coils spread around the board and we're going to do we're going to jump right in here into the battle phase and let you guys see how some of this uh more interesting technology does work before we touch on that real quick is it in here where is it? let me just grab up the cards sure you got some of the other stuff that you can get uh you've got x-ray and that can take and reduce red weed. Sonic kegs, which are like the powder kegs, except these do more damage. Uh, radio, gain plus one earthen works for every future battle, that's great. Uh, the AMP bomb, and this prevents the flying machine from being built. This is one that I would absolutely recommend. You only need one breakthrough to uh, get this. And if a piece of the flying machine is built, roll a die, and on a green, you remove the piece and yellow and red no effect so basically it gives you a 50 percent chance of not having that flying machine being built and considering you only need four pieces for that thing to get built and lose the game this really will help you out uh, death ray each time a cylinder is turned into a wave on the strategic map remove two tripods in that wave's uh, tripod staging area 
excellent piece of technology. And then airships <clears throat> allow you to spend four production points to move any unit to any state. That's just excellent. You can take in, once you get done attacking up here, you can move them down to wherever your, uh, your combat's going. So like I said, the Tesla stuff, you're probably not gonna be able to get all of it, so you probably wanna focus on a couple of things, definitely the EMP to take and slow down the flying machine, and then maybe something like Tesla coils or field lasers or you know whatever else you want to help slow them down to kind of give you that edge in the game. Uh, here later we'll touch on uh, Tesla's tripod as well, which is, is neat. Uh, but let's take and we'll cut down to the field since we're in our battle phase. And what battle do we want to do? We've got a bunch. I'm probably not going to film them all, but I want to show you guys uh, the field laser and that. So let's take and do the field laser and the Tesla coil here with this black one tripod wave right here. Okay, again, since we don't have any hills, damn Martians are getting initiative, which means I have to place my units first and no earthen works or anything like that. So we'll just take and hope for the best. And we'll take my little field laser cannon here and I'm gonna place it dead center since that gives it the most amount of bang for its buck. It has a range of two, so it can hit all the way out to here. Other cannons, they could hit a little farther, but they're not gonna destroy. This Tesla cannon, I'm gonna take and place over to this left side, hope it's out of the way, because again, say the tripod gets placed over here in E and is marching down this way, this Tesla coil can still fire at it. Doesn't matter uh, what the range is, on the red, it hits that thing and takes it out. So let's take and draw our battle card, see which one it's gonna get placed in. It's gonna get placed in A, no! Of course it's gonna get placed in A. Heading straight for our Tesla coil. And the tripods, as usual, go first. It's going to move down and detect, since it is black. I always bet on black, so it's gonna go there. And then detect, nothing to detect. It is out of range of our field laser cannon. One, two, one, two. So can't hit it, but this Tesla coil can. So on a roll of red, we'll take this guy out. Let me grab my little dice here. Hopefully we can get it. I want to take one of these guys out quick. Let's see what happens here. Yellow, no. Okay, well, we missed, but that's all right. Next turn, he should get in range as long as he does not take us out. So it's going on detect and move down, and he's moving away from my cannon. Again, he moved either one of these would put him in range, but he's still out of range. But nothing to detect again, so he's not firing. That's good for us, but he's now headed for my Tesla coil. Again, this is not good. Let's see if my coil can get him. Nope, green it is. So, oh look, there's the red. All right, let's pull this off again. See what's gonna happen. One more here, come on. Get down in range. Down twice. And there it goes. Bang, bang. He takes out my Tesla coil. And let's see if... And Tesla coils actually aren't that expensive. I think the production points for them are only eight a piece. So for the amount of destruction you can actually get for those things, they're not bad. All right, let's take and roll for my laser cannon here and see if we can take this tripod out. At the range of two that he is, a yellow will kill him. Ah, oh, there it is. We got him. Bam. One dead tripod. Throw it up here in my little cup. And just like that, we took him out, and we can take and build ourselves another Tesla coil in the next production phase. All right, let's take and finish the rest of the uh, battles off and head back down to the map. All right, I went ahead and finished out the rest of those uh, little battle phases. It was mainly um, Tesla coils doing their stuff anyway. Uh, here's our remaining field laser that survived the battle that we just had. I had a Tesla coil here, but it was taken out by this Wave 2, which luckily only has one damaged tripod left in it from some previous battles that had happened. And then up here in the northern part uh, territories, there were actually three waves, and the Tesla coil that was up there uh, did very well. It actually ended up taking out two tripods, and, or two tripod waves, should I say, and then the third one, it just kept going and missed the Tesla coil, and the Tesla coil missed it. So, all things considered, they did really well. I gotta say, I love the Tesla coils. They do eight, they're great, they're cost-effective, or they, they cost eight, rather. 
but they're cost effective for the damage that they do and if you end up getting lucky bam you can really take out some uh some tripods with those things so i love that technology as far as this game is concerned it really does uh kind of make things easier uh we're gonna pop down into the devastation phase now which there isn't a whole lot to go on here i've already got red weed here i've already got red weed here down in florida so luckily up here in our northern territories there's only one uh, wave left to take and do a devastation phase for so we will take and do that here real quick and see what they have going on all right what weapon are they going to use it's only one so it's not going to be too bad green it's going to be the heat ray which is one workforce and two refugees so let's grab our refugees we already have some refugees from before there let's see what happens with them all right couple more refugees and oh this is going to drop us down this drops us down to 10 that area had started out at 12 and that loses us a couple of gears but good news is that there's still four gears there so they're still supporting all of those refugees i don't have to worry about moving them yet but i probably should but yeah we're not gonna worry about it too much all right we'll go down into our human action phase and this is again where we can take in move some troopers around i don't know where i want to move them to i kind of should i move these guys i'm kind of blocking off this area these guys are blocking and that's only a single tripod yeah we'll probably leave that there and the test coil is not going to move we will move these refugees though just because that area is probably going to get torn up one two because i do have a harbor somewhere else move these guys over one two over in that direction all right so that takes care of refugees we'll move them down just try to get them away from it maybe get the harbor going later now the escape phase all right one of the things i wanted to touch on real quick because i did not touch on it previously let's take and grab our uh, our player aid here let's say that these refugees were here okay where I've got a harbor up here in Michigan. At that point, you're going to take and roll for a potential escape. They'll either flee or you'll have no effect. And then if they flee, you have to roll for this, the sea encounter, because there could potentially be a sea encounter with them. And it's potential that they'll escape and there'll be no attack or that there will be a naval battle against one or two tripods, okay? And at that point, it's gonna be handled very similar to what we've done previously as far as the land battles are concerned, with the exception that you're gonna be using your blue C map. You can still see the A, B, C, D, and E for where the tripods are gonna start. Your troops are gonna actually start here along the top and try to work their way down versus the other way. And you're gonna be taking and using ships, obviously, we're my little ship counters. Let me grab some here. You're going to be using <clears throat> ship counters instead, and you're going to have freighters and then potentially warships that you can buy, which I believe are four a piece. Yeah, uh, warships, and they're pretty much a sea cannon. All right, they act just like a cannon. They can move around uh, unlike a cannon that can though, and they're trying to take and take out any potential tripods. So when you're doing an escape like that, you're trying to roll once just to see if they are escaping if there's no effect they're going to stay there and then attempt to escape on a following turn but then if they do escape and you'll get points for them escaping but only if you don't have a battle and then if you do have a battle for each point of those refugees they turn into a freighter ship that's trying to escape in that manner so you could potentially have a battle to play out against one or two random tripods and it's a good idea to save at least a few points to put into at least a warship so you can try to protect your freighters if you're going to have that. Uh, it'd be great if you could have at least a couple of freighters, or not freighters, warships that can take and protect your uh, refugees. Because again, you want to get as many points as you can and getting a couple of refugees is points and then you're always going to have a string of refugees going and you're going to have some sea battles going. Uh, they're going to operate again same thing there is a naval deck that it operates like i said almost identical to 
the uh, the land battle deck and you're just going to take and work top to bottom left to right just like you do on the others and the thing of this is uh, these have closest on them so it'll move towards its closest freighter closest warship or it'll say specifically towards freighter or warship and you'll just take and follow the instructions really intuitive really easy ai system for the battles land and sea i gotta say they did really well as far as that is concerned uh our victory points i think i've got two destroyed areas now so with that being 11 that means i get nine no escapees where's my production there we go one more and i'll move the germ counter up one more time we'll go to our martian action phase and let's see what all our martians are going to do let's see i'll tell you what let's pause real quick and we'll move them around off camera since there's a lot of little guys to move around here okay we got done moving them around doing their little actions and i lost the game <laughs> again they built the damn flying machine they got the two of them uh guys down over here ended up rolling red and finishing that thing off uh, it, it's almost a requirement to get that EMP bomb to take and slow them down because that thing just gets built too damn often. And that's one of the things that I did hear about this game is it seems like uh, the flying machine can be just a very quick end of your game. You know, not much you can do about it, even if you're making good decisions down here that... Uh, just if the roll comes up unlucky for you, you'll take and uh, lose the game. We'll finish out the round though and just see what else happens. Uh, flying machine, a few guys moved over here to sea. Some of the, uh, one of the ones who was at sea moved over here into North Carolina. Um, and then some others were taking and uh, moving on down. So that's, uh, that's what ended up happening. Oh, and then we have one down here that uh, had an arrival and split. So it went from here to over to the sea. So ended up gaining some extra waves as well while we were at it but as part of the game and they ended up getting eight points of victory because they have two areas that have red weed which that puts uh push them up the track uh currently they're standing at one colonization and nine points so they basically have 19 um to my was it 39 but it doesn't matter since they built the damn machine anyway it won so oh well uh, last phase, one of the things that we didn't get to show you last time is the assembly phase, and that's going to come into play right here. Uh, that cylinder that arrived when I hit uh, germ level three, all right, you're going to take and roll to see if that cylinder is going to get created, and it has to take and match the color of the handling machine, all right? So you've got your green handling, yellow handling, and red handling. So you'll roll, and if it flips over, or if you roll that color rather, then that cylinder becomes another wave of tripods. So let's take and roll and see if that happens. There it is, there's the red. Damn, I tell you, I've been rolling red hard. All right, so that cylinder gets switched out for that tripod wave, and now they've come in. Now, while it's still in cylinder form though, that's the point at which you can take and use infantry to take and go down there and attack those guys in the cylinder and reduce the amount of tripods that are in there that you'll potentially have to fight later. But once they've hit the wave uh, themselves, infantry aren't going to do anything to them. So that completes out that. There is one other little thing that I want to show you guys that's a neat addition to the game. A couple things, actually. Let me grab these up. Oh, come on. Get up. Oh, my table there is there is the whole tesla's tripod and that's a different kind of version of the game if you're playing with this and um, some of the other rules it changes set up just a little bit but basically you get this tripod that he recovered and he rebuilds and it's fighting for you guys but if it's destroyed you lose the game as well so you have to keep it from getting destroyed but it can take and get into battles itself and it has its own tesla coil and it's got a field laser cannon but then you can upgrade it as you're going on to level two where it gets more equipment and more health and then level three again with more actions and more health and more weapons and then the big daddy itself level four where it has a buttload of weapons buttload of health and you can take and repair the uh 
the tripod itself if it takes damage. And there is a counter for each one of the different levels that you can include. Uh, one other little thing when it comes to this game is something that I, I like that since they did so many versions of this game with you know UK and American and so on that you can actually have the War of the Worlds League of Nations and you can play linked games of this. All right, so you can have your American territories being invaded by the tripods in one game and then the UK being invaded by tripods and so on. And they've included a player aid for that so you can link the games and actually have rules that take and pertain to what happened in this game versus that game and all that stuff. Let me grab the, uh, the player aid and show it to you guys real quick. Now this, of course, I haven't played since I don't have uh, but just the the US version of it. But it is a neat idea that if you have multiple versions and it gives you an incentive, uh, so this is good on DVG's part if someone wants to take and be a completionist and have this type of gameplay, that they would need more than just a single copy of the game. So, you know, kudos to them for that. But it is a neat idea that you can have a world level War of the Worlds and this is taking and linking that. So that is a neat addition to the game, I gotta say. Uh, I like the game as a whole. Like I said, it feels very similar to uh, Field Commander Napoleon. The other, the Field Commander type games in the way combat is handled, the uh, AI decks themselves, they're great. They're very intuitive. It's very easy to figure out combat, and how things are gonna play out uh, and like that. The only thing about the game is it's a little hard. All right, um, you do seem to die off very quickly. I've lost to that flying machine a few times already. Uh, so I would definitely recommend taking in, playing with the Tesla technologies, have the EMP bomb and use it to reduce the, uh, the flying machine. I would almost house rule it just from as many times as I've lost that thing that you just start with the EMP bomb and you can take and work towards other things and just re and you're not even reducing it as a guarantee it's just a 50 percent chance to not have it uh have the piece pop in there so it's still possible for it to happen but with as many waves as can pop up on the board and the chance you got one in six chance of you know this happening that happening it does make it to where flying machine does seem to happen quite often and if you don't have anything to slow that down you could get right to the end of the game and think you're getting ready to get the germs and then they get that last piece and you're screwed so i definitely play with the emp bomb and maybe even just start with it just to reduce that difficulty a little bit maybe as a first time playthrough and then after you kind of get the hang of it and you've got a better feel for the game uh, then play it on a more normal key where you got to take and research it and have it a little bit slower. But that would ease your transition into the game a little bit if you are new to it. Uh, other than that, do you like the game? Production quality is great. Counters are great. Everything just like DVG. Sequence of play on the board. Se uh, player aid goes along with the sequence of play. Always good choices. DVG always makes it really easy to follow the game. So I definitely appreciate that. Uh, good game on a whole. Definitely recommend it. But that's going to be it for me. You guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.